It's OK to change your mind, a session for Year 13 students came to university in September 2020, presented by Derby College and the University of Derby. First of all, we will talk about your higher education application. This means studying beyond the age of 18 at either university or college. Most people apply to university well in advance, but even in June, July or August, there's still time to apply or to make changes to your plans. And if you applied a while ago, it's definitely worth taking the time to check that your chosen course gives you all that you want. You probably have more time now to do your research and think things through, so another check could be well worth it. If you have already applied to university through the UCAS service, you will have a confirmed offer by now. But if you have had second thoughts about what you want to do, you can still make changes. You can change your course, change the university or college, or change the year you start your course. You can even change all three. There are two main ways to find out more and make a start on this. The first way is to make direct contact with the university or college that you are interested in by phone, email or through social media. If you are sure of your choice and you haven't applied already, this may be a good option. The admissions team are there to help you with your application and they'll be able to explain your options and help you through the process. If you apply directly though, you cannot use UCAS Clearing, which I'll explain more about later. The second way is through UCAS. UCAS is a central service that organises higher education applications across the UK. You may already have applied through UCAS, and if you have, then this is the best place to start. They are there to help students make applications, so if you contact them, they'll be happy to explain the process for making changes. Now I will explain a bit more about UCAS Clearing. This is a system which allows applicants who aren't holding an offer to contact universities and colleges that have spare places. You can find out more on the UCAS website where they have step-by-step -step how-to guides to take you through it. For new applicants or anyone not holding an offer, clearing opens on the 6th of July. You can contact universities and arrange an offer of a place, which is then agreed through UCAS. Later on, when results are announced, anyone who doesn't meet the requirements of their offer will be entered into clearing automatically. And again, you contact universities directly to agree a new offer. Clearing is then available from 3pm on A-Level Results Day, which is the 13th of August in 2020, until mid-September, but most people will get places agreed during the first couple of days. In 2019, 73,000 students found their place through clearing, so there are plenty of options. Places will fill up quickly, but you can start researching options in advance on UCAS now, and most universities have a fast-track scheme so you can register with them in advance and be ahead of the queues on Results Day. There is a similar system called UCAS Adjustment, which runs at the same time. This allows you to keep your firm offer while you look for a better option. This gives you the best of both, but you can only use this if you have met and exceeded the conditions of your firm offer. There may be more spare places available this year due to the uncertainty around coronavirus, so both of these could be worth looking into. There are three key points about making changes. One, there is plenty of opportunity to apply late or change. We'll talk later about key things you might want to think about and how you could do some research. Two, you can go to UCAS or direct to the university or college for more help. They are there to help you, so make use of them. Three, make a start on that research. Even if you eventually decide not to make changes, it's well worth taking the time to find out more about your choice and what is on offer. It's nearly time for your next chapter at university to begin. As you start to prepare for university, I'm sure you'll have lots of questions about how and where you'll be studying. The universities are starting to make plans for how they can welcome you for the start of your first semester. To work to government guidelines, universities will be considering how they can enforce social distancing across their campuses and halls of residence. Some universities are planning for online and remote teaching alternatives during the first semester only, whilst other universities are considering a more blended approach to learning. At the University of Derby, a blended model is planned for September to encompass regular on-campus contact time in small teaching groups, practicals and lab sessions, as well as remote alternatives to large lectures. They're also planning for personalised virtual services, including academic support, the careers and employment service, student wellbeing and the union of students. You can find out more about how teaching will take place on the University Applicant Information pages. 
Our current students at the University of Derby have been remote learning since March and can offer their advice on creating new study habits in a new environment. You can find top tips from students at Derby on our applicant information pages. Top tips from our students include creating a designated study area for September, getting organised and asking lots of questions. You can ask our uni buddies on our web pages for further advice. If you are still feeling unsure, we have some ideas to help you research your options. For ideas on how to decide, you can look at another video on this series called What Now? Choosing Your Next Steps. This gives great ideas on how to weigh up your options and make a decision. The good news for you is that you've already made two big transitions, one moving up to GCSE and another when you started your Level 3 course. This means that you can reflect on what went well with those decisions or what you could do differently. Then you can apply that experience to this decision. You could compare GCSE with A-level, school with sixth form, and did you prefer practical or theory subjects? How did the changes feel? And do you have any regrets? You could do a mind map of your reasons or discuss with friends or family, or even just tell your cat, whatever works to get you thinking. Before you try and find answers, you need to know your questions. So spend some time thinking about what is important to you. Try and think both short and long term and get ideas from friends and family. This is hard because of the uncertainty around coronavirus, but it will not always be like this. Your first few months at uni may not be what you had planned, but gradually things are starting to get back to normal. Imagine a typical day. What's your journey like? Who do you live with? Are you in labs, lecture halls or even outside? What about weekends? What do you want to do outside of studying? Do you just want a good coffee shop or is somewhere to go rock climbing essential to you? Find out what the subject is really like. Some subjects differ a lot between universities, so find out exactly what is involved in the course and what modules will be taught. The most common reason for students dropping out of uni is that they don't like their course, so make sure you find out all you can and try some online taster sessions. Find out if there is any industry accreditation available and is that important to your future career plans. What is the teaching like? How are you taught? Is it large lecture halls or small group discussions? Who are your teachers? Are they industry professionals or research specialists? Is it practical with lots of placement or all theory and academic study? You're making a big step in your career, so have a think about how you want to feel at the end of your study. Do you want lots of options and new ideas or a clear path in front of you? You could choose an academic subject that you enjoy and keeps lots of options open. Or do you want to study a vocational course that prepares you for a specific role? For example, sociology will allow you to choose from a range of topics, give you broad subject knowledge and transferable skills that are relevant to many different jobs. But a social work degree may teach you to apply sociology theory to a specific profession that you can go straight into. You're making memories that last a lifetime. So how do you want to look back on your time at uni? It's more than just study. What else do you want to get out of your time in higher education? And what do you want those memories to include? What could student life give you that you can't do at any other time? Travel, volunteering or student politics? You're also making your future. Education is more than just teaching you skills or information. It should change your outlook on life. You can join societies, do some volunteering, and make the best of employability support to explore different career paths and build your confidence and ambition. What kind of future do you want? Because this is your chance to make that happen. When you've thought about what you want, it's time to find some answers. So you've got lots of options. What research can you do to help you decide? UCAS Hub allows you to search, compare and shortlist courses that you're interested in. This website also includes lots of videos and advice on a range of career options, including job roles, student finance, gap years or apprenticeships. It really is a one-stop shop for everything to do with higher education, with a really helpful call centre team as well. You could also use the Discover Uni website, which has government statistics on employability and graduate destinations and allows you to compare courses. The Prospects website is aimed at students and graduates, but if you are interested in where your degree subject could lead, Prospects is a really useful source of information. There are even league tables which rank universities on a range of different factors, from student satisfaction to employment prospects. I've shown the uni guide and the complete university guide here. 
You can also try the Guardian Newspaper League table, which as you can see from the logo on the left, ranks Derby University in the top 30 in the UK. Results differ, so look beyond the rankings and into the data behind it to find the course that suits you. To help you make decisions about which university is right for you, or to find out more about the university you have applied to, you can use Unibuddy. The Unibuddy platform can be found on the university's web pages or on UCAS. The platform allows you to message current students and staff to ask questions. You can talk to someone who has the same interest as you or is studying a course of interest. Unibuddies will aim to respond to your questions within 24 hours. Unibuddy live events allow you to get immediate answers to questions through the chat function and see the questions asked by other students. Unibuddy live events are often themed, for example, on topics such as student finance, halls of residence, study skills and wellbeing. Sign up to the events and make sure you ask any questions or worries you have. Many universities, like Derby, are also offering virtual open days. During these events, you can read information, watch videos about your course of interest, hear from current students and staff, and find out more about the support available. Once again, these can be accessed through the university's web pages. Some universities are also offering additional webinars to help you prepare for September. At the University of Derby, we are running webinars on study skills, including how to reference, build on your arguments and reflective writing. We hope this video helps you to decide whether starting university in September is the right decision for you. Remember, it's your choice, but there are people who can help. To contact the Widen Access team with any questions, email us at w18.derby.ac.uk or visit our webpage. We have shared some ideas of where you can get more information and some examples of the kind of support that universities and colleges are offering. Find out more about the courses that interest you with virtual open days, chat with current students, sample lectures or transition work to help you prepare for more study. Check university and college websites for more and also for contact details if you need to ask questions.